Welcome to part three. In this part, we're going to show you just a few little sewing tips, and then we're going to go through a few troubleshooting tips that might help you uh, sew longer before you get a snag of a problem. Quick review, we have threaded our machine properly, we have threaded our bobbin properly, and we've brought the bobbin thread up through the needle plate and trimmed those threads off nicely on a thread cutter, and we're ready to start. Most projects that you're going to do are going to involve some variation on a straight or zigzag stitch. So remember, where you locate those capabilities of your machine, make sure you're setting your machine so that it will perform the way you want it. In this first little sample, I want to do a straight stitch, and I just want to do a typical straight stitch seam. I'm going to have my stitch width, that's whether the machine does a straight stitch or a zigzag. I'm going to have that set at zero. I'm not doing a buttonhole on this machine, so that leaves this dial set at zero and I'm going to use a stitch length of about two and a half millimeters. So remember, that's just a matter of adjusting, and I know that back stitching is done by holding that little dial up. On the needle plate, you will notice that there are a number of lines marked, and if you have your instruction booklet, you can check to see what those mean, but I know, and, and you could even measure, I know that my 1.5 centimeter guideline, or 5 eighths of an inch guideline, is the one that's going to be most commonly used for garments. I know that the half inch guideline, sorry, half inch guideline, is going to be commonly used for craft projects. And then 3 eighths inch is also a setting that's used for craft projects. This very first one on my needle plate is the quarter inch guideline, which is used a lot in quilting, but of course I have a quilting foot, and so I don't have to rely on that one, but I could use it if I had to. So when you're ready to start sewing, there's a few things that you just have to get into the habit of doing. Make sure that when you're about to begin, that the take-up lever is at its highest point, and remember that if you're going to turn that hand wheel, that you're going to turn it towards you. So I'm going to pretend that I'm sewing a seam in a garment, and I am going to use this 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeters guideline. You'll notice that I begin by putting the foot down. Not hard to remember when you're using really thin fabric, because it will be obviously up if you don't put it down. But if you're really using thick fabric, you might forget, and that is something that's going to cause immediate problems. Because remember, putting the foot down engages the tension on the thread. So I'm ready to start sewing, and I'm able to just sew ahead, keeping the edge of my fabric on that guideline, and I'm getting a nice even set of stitches. My tension is set properly, and I'll, I'll take it out of correct setting in a few seconds and show you what it might look like. But I'm ready to stitch. Now, some of you are asking, why didn't you backstitch at the beginning of that, of that line? Yes, I certainly could have. I can also backstitch at the end. So to backstitch at the end, I'm going to come just to the very edge of the machine. I'm going to backstitch a few stitches, and then that's it. I'm going to stop. So I'm ready to take this piece of fabric out of the machine, and I have to be aware of a couple of things. First of all, I need to have finished the last stitch that the machine was making. As that thread comes down from the upper part of the machine, it literally passes over the bobbin case and then gets caught up as a loop. And if I haven't completely finished that stitch, I'm going to have that dragging on my piece as I pull it out. So a really good habit to get into is at the end of your line of stitches, look to see where that take-up lever is. And no matter where it is, bring it up to the highest point. And you will remember that you always turn the hand wheel toward the front of the machine. So I've brought my take-up lever up to the highest point and now I should be able to pull this away. So I'm going to lift the foot, that disengages the tension, and I can pull this away from the machine, and I can clip it off. So I've got my line of stitches, and uh, I know that, that I'm ready to start with my next stitch. 
For my next line of stitches, by starting with my take-up lever at the highest point, we know that the first thing is, that's going to happen on this is the needle is going to go down. And that's what I want. I want the needle to go into the fabric and not come up and pull the thread out of the eye of the needle. So, if I wanted to back stitch at the beginning, the true correct way to do that is to start a little ways in, back stitch to the edge, and then go forward, whatever guideline you're using. The stitches themselves should be of a length that's long enough to hold your pieces together securely, but not so short that they actually build up and create um, actually a layer, a thick layer in your, in your thread and separate the yarns of the weave. So that's why two and a half is a good setting. If I want to make a longer stitch, then I'm just going to adjust the machine downward. And remember, that's where the feed dogs take a bigger jump and we're going to get a much longer stitch. Take a lever to the highest point, you can pull it out and you can cut it off. So just to show you then, if I wanted to do a zigzag, I'm going to set my stitch length to two and a half. I'm going to do an average size zigzag. And again, I'm going to set the, the fabric in the machine. I'm going to put the foot down and because I took the effort to make the take-up lever at its highest point at the end of the last seam, when I start, the very first thing the needle will do is go down. And I'll be able to make my zigzag in the zigzag fashion. Take-up lever at its highest point, lift and pull it away. My machine has had some trauma and it doesn't always keep the presser foot up. Alright, let's look at a couple of troubleshooting things that might happen when you're sewing. And I think probably one of the most common things that will happen when you're sewing is you've done your first seam and you're ready to start the next one. So you put the fabric in and you get ready to go. And when you start, the very first thing that happens is the needle becomes unthreaded. Let's see what's really happening there. When I finished my last seam, I brought my take-up lever to its highest point and therefore when I'm going to start the next line, the very first thing the machine is going to do is going to go down. But let's see what happens if I take it out and I don't have the take-up lever at its highest point. So I've sewn and let's say I have it like that. I will be able to pull this out of the machine because the needle is up out of the machine of the needle plate and I'll, I'll be able to tug on it and a couple of things are happening. First of all, I can't pull that out of the machine and it doesn't, like if I was to force it, I would probably bend the needle and break it. So this is the problem of, I haven't completed the last stitch that I made. I need to bring that take-up lever up to finish up its stitch so that it releases that thread. So now I've brought it up that I can release the thread and it will come out, but it's still not at the highest point. So let's say I have trimmed that thread now and I'm ready to start my next line of stitches and I'm going to start and the first thing that's going to happen is, because it was here, my take-up lever is going to come up and you will see my needle unthreaded itself. I didn't make any stitches. And that can be really annoying when that constantly happens. So it all has to do with the position of the take-up lever. It has to be at its highest point when you start and when you end the line of stitches. When you become more and more adept at sewing, you will recognize on your machine where that point is that the take-up lever has, or the stitch has been fully made and it releases the thread so you could pull it away, but the take-up lever may not be at its highest point. One thing that we do in quilting is a process called chaining. And so in the case of chaining, I don't necessarily have to end one line of stitches and pull it off the machine. 
before I do the next one. So if I wanted to sew these two pieces together, I'm starting with my take up lever at the high spot, and I'm stitching. And now it doesn't really matter where my take up lever is because I'm not actually removing this piece before I go on to my next. And so that's going to be an exception to the take up lever at its highest point rule. But if I now want to take this piece out, I would be wise to bring the take up lever to its highest point, lift the presser foot, pull the piece away, and cut it off either with the cutter or the scissors.